Hi, I'm Tom Nugent from Laser Motive, and I'm going to talk to you today about our laser power over fiber systems. The demonstration unit we have right here takes electricity from the wall and converts it into light with this laser. We then feed the laser light through a fiber optic cable. In this case, we have about 60 meters of fiber that then goes to this receiver, where we convert the laser light back into electricity. In this case, we're using that electricity to power this little toy copter, but it can be used for a lot of different applications. If you need high voltage areas where you need opto-isolated power or in high magnetic field environments. It can also be used for underwater robots or in another system we're developing, it can be used to mount onto a larger copter and actually power the copter and fly into the sky. And in the system I show here, we convert the laser light into a remote vehicle that is powered by laser from down below and is being converted back into light in special voltaics and running the motor. This demonstration unit here shows the end-to-end -end system converting electricity into light back into electricity and running a motor. We've actually taken this on a larger scale and flown vehicles outdoors. We've taken this wireless laser power system and flown aircraft such as this quadrocopter where we did a demonstration flying it for 12 and a half hours continuously with nothing but a five minute battery on board and our laser receiver. And in fact, we did aerial recharging of the battery at intermittent times after it had flown on battery without the laser. After that, we then took the Lockheed Martin Stalker UAV, adapted again our power receiver to it, and flew this outdoors in the desert multiple times and delivered power over ranges up to 600 meters to that aircraft in flight. Good there. Oh, yeah. So, we are now flying this robot with power coming from a laser through a fiber into the central receiver there. There is no battery on board this copter. The laser power is coming from the uh, cord into the floor here, converting the electricity into light, sending it through, in this case, about 100 meters of fiber, and it's going up to this copter here. This receiver unit puts out up to about uh, 75 watts of power. In flight here, we're producing a little bit less than 70 watts. And this system can scale up or down as needed. The unit here, like I said, produces about 70 watts. The next version of this is going to produce 400 watts, power a much larger copter that can carry payload and fly in wind up to altitudes of 300 meters. The smaller unit is on the table behind me, and that produces 10 watts for sensors where you need opto-isolation. Uh, the system here is composed of a lot of different components. We've got, uh, starting with the uh, chiller provided by Thermotex, the laser is provided by VLAP, uh, fiber was made by OFS and connectorized by Leone, and the receiver, foldable tanks, provided by Spectralab. We integrate all the system, make it work efficiently to deliver power, modulated, regulated power for systems like this. Flying a copter on laser power is more, it, it, it's better than using a copper wire in our opinion because the fiber is insulated. It can be lighter than copper and by being insulating it's safer than copper. You don't have a shock hazard if someone were to grab the fiber or to run into a power line. The fiber is also not metallic so in a defense environment you don't have a large antenna that's creating any uh, EMI and it's resistant, it's completely proof against any uh, radio frequency interference, you can send you know, 10 gigabits per second data down from the copter along a second data fiber at the same time that you're powering it through a power fiber. Are there any questions? Is this on multi-mode or single-mode fiber? This is a multi-mode fiber. What wavelength are you using? <laughs> This is near infrared in the sort of 800 uh, nanometer range. Are you throwing it 100 meters away or whatever? Not yet. We took a, uh, an off the shelf copter, in this case the Air Paratrone, and modified it for this. And the smaller copters like this really can't handle the wind you know, to go up. Um, when we scale it to the 400 watt unit, then they'll be outside at what? 200 meters over here. 
Now there is 100 meters of fiber between it and the laser right now. Yeah, I just want to see if we can drag it. <laughs> yeah, this one can't, but the higher power system will have enough uh, extra capacity to do it. This is a, a, a proof of concept system to show that the entire system works, the receiver is actually quite weight. The power per weight of the receiver here is comparable to a LiPo battery. And a larger power system is actually going to have a better power per weight. You know, the free space receivers we built, that you see on some of the uh, free flying aircraft that are over there, are 800 watts per kilogram. And in that case, you can adapt it to a system and displace some of your batteries, but not all of it, and not touch your payload buttons. What size fiber are you using? Uh, in this case, it's a 400 micron core fiber. So for those who just showed up, there's no battery on board this copter. All of the power it's using for flight and operations is coming to it from a laser mounted in this ground station here. Through 100 meters of fiber optic cable and to a receiver that's converting light back into electricity, providing DC power for the copter to fly. Is this graded or set index fiber? Is it that graded fiber or type of? Oh, uh, this is a set index fiber. <clears throat> you're controlling this with an iPhone? Yeah, we, uh, we took an off-the-shelf uh, drone that comes with a nice app. And we, you know, I you just tilt to fly it around, and there's a button to go up and down and uh, rotate, take off and land, and there's an emergency button that shuts off the motors. So. Uh, this is you can push uh, back to the NCD. Hey, Tom? Yeah? I'm going to land it. Yep, I'm ready.